and I'll be the very best, like no one ever was. Hey, what's up, everybody? Promise Man 22 here, bring, bring you glare. Oh boy. See, now I can't see. <laughs> see, now I can't see. Hey, what's up, everybody? Promise Man 22 here, bring you a new video, and this is the pilot episode, I suppose, of Transformers More Lore. Um, basically, uh, I don't really get notified when I get comments anymore. Like, 50% of the time, it doesn't even bother to tell me, hey, you got a, you got a comment, Primus. Haha, <laughs> thanks, man. So, and usually, I don't have time to respond to comments really much anymore, at least right now. Um, by the time I read a comment, it might be like a, a week after it's been posted. So, I decided to, if, the, if there was any questions on my Transformers lore videos, um, or any misconceptions I want to correct, I'd elaborate on the topic in these little videos. Why do I do this? A Transformers More Lore. I'm going to take a look at some of the questions and comments you guys left, and I'm going to elaborate on them. Sound good? I hope so. And if some of you people are like, Primus, where's the actual lore video? And I, calm down. Um, I, I really don't have time to work on videos that much, especially in November and early December. Um, but afterwards, lore videos should start to slowly come in. That's what I'm trying to supplement the channel with um, these sort of videos, these new stuff, right? I might extend this series to um, include comments like, you could comment on this video, any questions you have regarding the Transformers continuity that you, n you can't be bothered to look up yourself, and I can help explain some things, put stuff into context. Uh, my Twitter bio said that I was the number one Transformers historian on YouTube. Well, it used to say that, now, now it says that it's a parody account. But as the number self, as the self-proclaimed number one Transformers historian on YouTube, um, I I, I want to help you guys, right? So yeah. So if you have any questions on Transformers lore, I should open my eyes. If you have any questions on Transformers lore, if you want to comment, and um, I'll see if I can answer stuff like that. It's not like a usual Q and A stuff. Like don't a don't ask me what my favorite Transformers series is. But you know, just. Just sort of, sort of like, um, Ask Historian subreddit. Is that a subreddit? There's some subreddit where you ask historians historical questions. It's sort of like that. But let's look into these questions. This was on the Transformers IDW lore part 1, Megatron Origin. Um, Ratbat is G2, eh? No. Ratbat's body in uh, Megatron Origin is his original body back during his Senator days in that universe. Primex 1005.19 Gamma, and um, yeah, he as we saw that um, in that event, eventually he gets betrayed by Soundwave, who shoots him and takes his spark and puts it in a cassette. Later, we'll learn that he also took his brain module as well to put in the cassette, and that's in that universe how we get cassette rat bat. I don't know where you got the misconception that he's Generation Two, but no. This was on the first Beast Wars Uprising video. Is this canon with G1 or Beast Wars? First, you have to be pretty specific. There are a lot of G1 and Beast Wars continuities. And most Beast Wars continuities are part of G1 in the first place. Beast Wars Uprising takes place in its own continuity of Primax... Primax 209.0 Gamma? I didn't have to look that up. It appears to have been a branch of a universe where Beast Wars Megatron succeeded in assassinating Optimus Prime on the Ark, but that raises a lot of continuity questions that don't quite make sense at all. So I'm going to hold off on saying anything about where it branches off from until more information elaborates and help smooth things over. Because a lot of times in Transformers continuity, something just doesn't make sense at all and it could take them 30 years before they finally deliver information that smooths everything over. But right now it appears, it appears to be some sort of branch of the cartoon-based universes of like Primax 94.17 Alpha, including Beast Wars into that. But ultimately it's canon to Primax 209... 209.0 Gamma. Yeah. You do realize that the Brave series is not a Transformers franchise, Takata has stated that. Well. I never said it was a Transformers franchise, it's clearly part of the Brave franchise. In the video, I presented the Brave X Kaiser universe, uh, Simon 20... Simon 290.03 Alpha. Okay. I presented that universe as being part of the multiverse, as part of the Simon cluster. 
because it is. This information in this universal designation was given in Ask Vector Prime. Again, there's a difference between a franchise and being in the multiverse. Franchise is real world stuff. Multiverse, fictional stuff. It all comes together in fiction. In the real world, we have the G.I. Joe franchise, we have the Transformers franchise, but they all come together in one multiverse. Usually, except for supply. Also guys, when you try to correct me, don't st don't think you know everything, because more often than not you're just going to embarrass yourself. Wait, what was reasoning behind replacing the head with mono eyes? This was on the IDW, one of the IDW things. In Primax 1005.19 Gamma, Impurata and Shadowplay, this is, doesn't really have much to do with Shadowplay. Impurata was a process by the Senate to replace the Transformers' heads and hands. Not necessarily both inclusive. They, they could be exclusive of each other. But it replaced the heads and hands. Actually, I'll take that back. It might be exclusive. I don't remember seeing any... Let me look up something real quick. <laughs> Just want to check if this one Impurata victim had claw hands or not. Nope, he has normal hands. Come on. So sometimes they could replace the head. I, I'm not sure if there are any instances where they replaced only the hands. But um, they replaced those parts as a form of public humiliation. Basically, these are the people who spoke out against the Senate or were about to go against the Senate. Anyone who opposes the Senate, either in action or just in thought. They would have those parts removed and give them claws, which are hard to, um, hard to handle. And then they gave you the Cyclops head. It's public humiliation. It's, it's a sign. It's meant for people to go, haha, look at these people who got their faces replaced. They gave their identity removed. However, it's also a sign from the Senate saying, don't mess with us because we have the power to literally change your body, which I think goes against some human rights. Does it go against human rights if they're not human? In the Functionist universe, Primax 1114.26 Gamma, um, which is a branch off of Primax 1005.19 Gamma, um, we have a real powerful Senate that has graduated beyond just normal Impurata, where they can replace the face, not just with a Cyclops head, but with a flat screen where text comes up. They, they basically take away your voice. If you like literally spoke out against the Senate, you can't do that anymore because now you're having text go around that they can read, really. Um, also, every now and then pop-up little advertisements will show up giving propaganda for the Senate at that time. So yeah, Empirata was a very powerful political weapon and I believe really dominated the social climate of pre-war Cybertronian society. What is the title of this incarnation of RC? That was on the gender and relationship video, and I think I, I never I never bothered to actually check the number the timestamp. But I believe he's talking about RC of Prime X 1005.19 Gamma, the IDW universe again. This RC was originally male, and this was at the time where the cam uh, where the colonies had all left Cybertron, including um, Soulless Prime's descendants and stuff. So really, the female gender was not yet was not there on Cybertron anymore. The scientist Geoxys, during the Golden Age, tried to reintroduce gender to Cybertronian society, and then he uh, took RC against his will at this time, and involuntarily changed her gender to, as an attempt to reintroduce gender into Cybertronian society. At this point, RC appears to have accepted that she is female, but she is very... The whole situation broke her down, right? She went through horrible experimentation against her will, and that led her on the whole blood craze that she went on when she went off to kill Geoxys for over a year after the expansion crisis. Why does the films never show or explain this in the film? This is on the Transformers movie lore stuff, and the reason is... The typical fashion is the expl explanation of the plot isn't actually given in the movie properly. Often these comics are made to smooth over continuity issues that emerge with um, the continuity between the movies. And sometimes, uh, so, Michael Bay doesn't read the comics, right? And the writers don't read the comics. They make the movies. They ignore the expanded universe material, I guess. This isn't like Star Wars where we have people dedicated to making sure everything falls into continuity. 
Once continuity discrepancies and um, mind-boggling things happen in between sequels of the movies, comics and books and what have you are generally made to help smooth over some issues. However, usually the next movie will contradict some stuff that were in the comics in the first place, and only that also creates some little head-scratchers with the other movies, right? Why were the Decepticons on Earth? Was it for the AllSpark? Was it because Megatron wanted to meet the Fallen for the Solar Harvester? Was it because Sentinel Prime wanted to meet with Megatron? All those are answered in the comics. And comic, the comics and Expanded Universe stuff are usually made to, to put the movies together so they make sense. So that's why the movies don't talk about them, because the movies... <laughs> frankly, the movies care more about explosions. The movies care more about a contained story in their own little, in their own movies. And uh, for any continuity nuts, I guess, yeah, it's we're, we're left with the comics to help piece together stuff. Can't say I'm a fan of this story arc. I don't like how it contradicts a lot of the original G1 continuity. And this was on the IDW lore. And um, first off, there is no G1 continuity. Be more specific. Are you talking about the cartoon? Are you talking about the Marvel comics? A US or UK version? Um, but here's the thing. It doesn't contradict that continuity because it's not part of that continuity. The IDW stuff takes place in Primex 1005.19 Gamma. Uh, you're, you're either talking about Primex 984.17 Alpha, the American G1 cartoon, or Primex 984.0 Gamma, um, the American Marvel comics. And I forget the coordinates, the notation for the UK version too, but um, the, this is an entirely different continuity. And a lot of people on that video have been arguing over, this isn't real because this wasn't part of, this. the cartoon tells you, it says is different. It's not the cartoon, it's part of an entirely different universe. Yo my, yo, yo my man cites what was going to be a Decepticon, I like it. Alright. This is referring to Primex 1005.19 Gamma. We seem to be talking about that universe a lot. And how Sideswipe um, was with Sunstreaker when Megatron was giving his sort of rally to recruit the Decepticons. Now, I don't believe Sideswipe was going to be a Decepticon. The scene, particular, I think I left this out. Um, I haven't watched that video in a while, but Sideswipe is actually there to try to help convince Sunstreaker that he, he doesn't want Sunstreaker to actually be in the Gladiator Pits. Because originally that's what they thought was going to happen. They thought they were going to be there to join the Gladiator Pits. And Sunstreaker was a big fan of those. And si Sideswipe believed that it was okay for his brother, who it was his brother, um, it was okay for him to watch the Gladiator Pits, but he was a little nervous about Sunstreaker actually being in the pits. And that's why in K-On, when everyone was coming to the rally because they believed Megatron was going to recruit more people for the pits, um, Sideswipe was like, Sunstreaker, I, I, don't, I don't know about this. So I, I really don't see any... Sideswipe didn't even know it was going to be a rally for Decepticon recruitment, really. And then the whole rally got, you know, busted by Sentinel Prime and the Autobots in the first place. And Sideswipe would later appear as an Autobot. Uh, I think the next time he shows up is maybe all the way in 2006, when he's an Autobot under the command of Hound. He was a member of the Senate Enforcers, though. Um, although the, the time frame really isn't quite clear, it looks to be about pre, um, pre-chaos theory-ish timeline. He and Sunshik are both were Senate Enforcers, and they both took down Impactor once, or at least fought Impactor once, but yeah. So that wraps up the uh, questions for today. Um, I hope I've cleared up some misconceptions. I hope I've elaborated on things that, um, are interesting to elaborate on, but... Yeah, um, I think I'm going to end the video here. Thank you guys so much for watching. Follow me on social media for updates. Even though my Twitter says it's a parody account, I assure you it is not. Um, go subscribe to my second channel for shenanigans. That's the only way I can describe it. And yeah, um, have a good day, ladies and gentlemen.